Okay, we made it to chapter five. So let's go ahead and talk about what we're gonna discuss in this chapter. In the past, what we talked about was particle equilibrium, right? We always had like a little mass and we drew a dot and then we drew some forces acting on it like that, right? We didn't have any sort of supports or anything like that. Typically, we've just had cables at this point. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at what's called rigid bodies and we're gonna do rigid body equilibrium. Now in doing rigid bodies, you're gonna be able to look at basically a more complicated system that has supports and um, some other forces acting on it besides tension. All right, so that's what we're gonna start with in this chapter. We're gonna start out with 2D systems. We'll work our way to 3D as we move through the chapter. Now, before we get started on actually looking at equilibrium, one of the main things about this chapter is going to be drawing our free body diagrams. And FBD, remember, stands for free body diagram. Now, we're gonna start out looking at several supports, and we're gonna go through and talk about the forces that are created by those supports. And before we do that, in any of the statics textbooks, if you look through there, you'll find that they always have tables for the different supports. So this is one from the Hibbler book. All right, remember I told y'all the Hibbler book's a really good book. It's the one I usually teach out of when I teach statics. Um, now, those tables are really great to show you how the forces and stuff behave, but in order to really understand these problems, you can't rely on just looking at this table to figure out the sports. You need to figure out what the forces are doing and what the moments are doing and why they are there. If you figure that out, you don't need this table because I've seen many, many students get lost on quizzes and exams because they don't have this table given to them because they don't know how to figure out on their own what forces or moments should be uh, needed due to the supports. So hopefully once we go through these examples, you'll kind of have an idea of how to figure out what each support needs, okay? For the free body diagram. So let's start out with the simple ones. Let's do cables and ropes first. So we, let's say we've got this beam here and we've got a cable that's attached. Now, if I wanted to draw the free body diagram of that, I'm gonna isolate the part of the body that has the force acting on it. So that's gonna be this shaded area here. And now I'm gonna draw the force due to the cable. Now a cable, we've already used cables before, those are going to provide a tension. And the tension is always gonna act away from the body. All right, so let's just call this T, it's gonna be at some angle theta. And remember, tension acts away from the body. So it pulls the body. It's never going to push the body. So think if you had a cable and if you were trying to push that cable into something, it's not going to do you much good. Cables are meant to pull, provide tension. All right, so now we have this. It's going in this direction as it goes away. Now let's look at rollers and rockers. So a roller, you can think of that as literally just being it's a support. So think about this is on the surface here. Anytime you have something that says it's a roller, all that does is it just supports the object on top of it. So it just rests on top of it. All right, and that's all it's doing. Now, the force that we're going to have for this, we do our free body diagram. Let's isolate the body that the force is going to act on. And now all this is doing, this orange beam here, it's just sitting on top of this roller. That's all the roller does. It just allows something to rest on top of it. Now because of that, that roller is going to keep this beam from pushing down into the ground, for instance. So that roller provides a force going up. All right, so the force is gonna be perpendicular 
to the surface. This is at here, at the point of contact. Oops, that's a C. Now let's think about why that would be. If I have this beam here and I stick this roller under here, this is just a support. It allows this beam to rest on top of it. My goal here is to keep this beam in this position, right? So it doesn't go down here on the left side. So this force is keeping this beam from dropping down. It's pushing it back up. So this force is preventing motion in the direction opposite of this force, if that makes sense. Because this beam's trying to go down. The roller says, no, no, it pushes it back up. And that upward force is what keeps that beam in place. Okay. Now we also have rockers. Rockers are kind of the same thing. So when you draw the free body diagram out, you'll isolate your body. So there's that body, this little blue beam here. For a rocker, this also prevents that uh, displacement. So here, this beam is sitting on here. The beam would naturally want to pull down just because of gravity. This rocker pushes it back up, counteracts that downward motion, and it keeps it in place with this force F. Okay, so now we've got that. This one is also perpendicular. Now with both of these, if you think about it, if this orange beam is just resting on this roller here, could it go, go this way? Could it go left and right? It could, right? You could roll on top of it. So, and the reason for that is why you could move to the left and right is because the roller doesn't provide a force in the X direction. So there's no force provided by this support to prevent that sideways translation. Same thing with this, right? It's got this rocker. You could rock this thing back and forth and it could slide in the horizontal direction, but it can't go in the vertical direction. And the reason it can't go in the vertical direction is because of this force here. So let's make another note and we can put that the body can move parallel to the surface, but not perpendicular. Right? And this is all because of these forces. All right. So that's what we get with a roller and a rocker. And let's see, the Hibbler book has an actual picture of a rocker. It's hard to see with the light here, but this is a rocker. All right, so you can see here, it's got a rocker support. This is for a bridge. So that's what it looks like. Okay, so it's gonna keep the bridge from moving vertically, but it could still have some motion in this direction. And you can see that with this base here. This is able to kind of rock back and forth like a rocking chair. Right. So rockers and the rollers only provide that perpendicular force. To prevent that vertical motion. Now the next one we're going to see a lot of these pins. Pins, let's think about what that looks like. So uh, let's look at these scissors. Now there really there's a pin in here holding these two pieces of the scissors together. All right now if we look at the scissors, the scissors you can't pull them apart, right? I can't Let's put this this way. I can't make the scissors like separate in the X direction, right? It's pinning them together. Same thing with Y, the Y direction. I can try to pull these apart, but they're not going to be pulled apart because of their pin right here holding them together. Now I can rotate these about this axis all I want, but I cannot produce any sort of translation here in these two pieces. 
okay? And that's because of the pin that's holding them together. So that's what a pin does, and this is how I'll show it on the pictures. So it's gonna look like this. Now, basically what a pin does is it prevents translation. And it prevents translation in both the X and Y directions. All right, so if I have this, I wanna do the free body diagram. I'm gonna pull out the part of the body that has the forces acting on it. And the pin is going to provide a force in the X direction and the Y direction. Okay. So this force in the X direction is going to prevent this body from moving in the X direction. This Y force prevents any sort of movement in the vertical direction. So if you haven't noticed, these forces produced by the supports prevent translation in that direction. Okay, so here's this. So Fx and Fy, those are called components of reaction. So when we say find the reaction forces, that's what we're talking about. And here, our pin can support a force in any direction, so X or Y. And what it does is it prevents translation in the X and Y directions. But as we saw with the scissors, we can still rotate about the pin axis. Right, so if this is the pin right here, I can rotate about that all I want, but I can't make this thing translate in the X and Y directions. All right, so it prevents translation, but allows rotation. Okay, so if we go back to this, this arm here, this little beam, whatever you want to call it, this thing could rotate back and forth like this, but if you were to try to pull it this way, like grab the end of it and pull it, it's not gonna go anywhere because you've got this pin. And the pin is providing these forces here, right? So a pin, anytime we see that, we're gonna draw an X component and a Y component, unless for some reason you're told otherwise. All right, let's do a couple more of these. Next, we have rollers or pins in a slot. So let's say we have these two pieces here. Let's just say they're pieces of wood and then we've got this link, it's attached to something. And then we've got a roller in here. So this thing can roll back and forth in this space, right? It can go back and forth. Now, if we have that and we want to look at the diagram here, what we need to draw the free body diagram of is going to be the circular part. And if we do that, be like this. Now, what's gonna happen, if you think about it, this is trying to push down on this lower one, right? Think of the weight of this object, and it's got weight out here. It's gonna be pushing down here. This support right here at the bottom for this slot, this is going to push it up to prevent it from moving down. So this one will push up like this, or if this is being pulled upward and this roller here is pushing against this top surface, this top surface is working to keep this thing from moving upward. So this top surface is going to push down. Okay, so we could also have that. So here you're going to have a reaction that's perpendicular to the slot. So all these supports are doing is just preventing motion. So up until now we've looked at translation. They've all prevented translation. Now let's look at a fixed support. 
let's say we've got this beam here and it's going to be welded right here and here we've got some sort of metal object so they're welded together now if we weld something together we're going to consider that a fixed support if you're welding this together you don't want this to move at all okay, that's the purpose of welding it well, let's draw our free body diagram and see what we get now for this if it's welded let's think about the motion that's prevented with this fixed support or the weld now can it move in the the right hand direction no so we could take this and try to pull on it this way but it's not going to move because we've got a weld here that means we've got a force in the x direction and i just always draw them positive and then can we move this in the y direction could we like hang off the bottom of this pull it down no because we have this weld here that weld prevents that Y direction motion. So we have an FY that's preventing any translation in the Y direction. And finally, if I pull on the end of this, if I imagine you can hang off the end of this, if you're hanging on the end of this, if it's welded and fixed, you don't want this to have any sort of motion at all, including any rotation. So if we're not gonna allow any rotation when a weight's applied to this beam, then the fixed support has to counteract that. So that would be an M. So now we've got this couple moment. So if you go and hang off the end of this, what's going to keep this beam from rotating about this point right here would be the couple moment that's created by that weld or the fixed support. So a fixed support prevents translation with the two forces, and then it prevents all rotation with this couple moment. So let's write that out. So it prevents translation and rotation. Okay, and examples of that, anything that's welded, it's a good example. Uh, those concrete pillars for bridges it's a good example you don't want those moving around right those big light posts you see on the side of the road all of those would be considered fixed supports okay so the fixed supports no translation no rotation so that means you're going to have these three things on your free bride diagrams all right and then finally we've got gravity all right, got to add gravity, so don't forget that. So if you've got some body, we're going to have weight, which is mass times gravity. So you got to make sure you put that in your free body diagram. And this is always going to act downward. Okay, last couple of things. So in general, what you need to do, instead of looking at the table or coming back to these examples that we did, when you see a support, you need to think about what that support is doing. What motion is that support preventing and allowing? All right, so if a support prevents translation in a given direction, it's preventing that translation because a force is developed in the opposite direction. Right, so just like the roller, if I've got a piece of wood sitting here on this roller right here, this roller is preventing this piece of wood from moving downward. Because okay, the natural tendency of this board would be to move downward just due to gravity. All right, so the force is going to push it up to prevent that vertical motion. Right, so we got that. And then if a support prevents rotation, then it prevents that rotation by creating a moment. All right, so a moment is exerted on the body to prevent that rotation. So for now, the only one we have for that, the only example would be a fixed support. All right, so if this is fixed, that means we don't want any translation we don't want any rotation 
So you would have your two x component, well, your one x component, and then your one y component for force, and then you're going to have a couple moment. So the two forces prevent that translation. The moment prevents the rotation. All right, and if you can't tell what direction the forces should be, just pick a direction. It works out in the end. You'll see what I mean as we go through the examples. Now this right here, I can't stress this enough. We must do this every time. So you should always, always, always draw a free body diagram for these problems. So make sure you always draw them. I know students don't always like to do that because they think it's a waste of time, but trust me, you want to do that. It makes it a lot easier to see what you're doing and analyze your problem. Okay, so let's stop this here. This video is getting long, and we'll pick it up next time with an example.